my name is uh, Balaj Domian, and uh, I'm a junior asset artist at Guerrilla. <laughs> I traveled a lot before I uh, I lived in Sydney, Australia. I also lived in Italy. I also lived uh, in the United States, in, in Utah. I was studying at university and uh, my major was e- business economics. And I, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I spent uh, seven years of my life with studying this and <laughs> then uh, throwing all of that out of the window, you know, and so I was, uh, started learning 3D. <laughs> all of these journeys around the world that I mentioned uh, happened uh, because I managed to get good enough grades that uh, rewarded me with scholarships. So I had the chance to spend one semester in Italy, then one semester uh, in Utah. You know, this this was just my dream to like work on video games one day and just I just really loved, I always loved like art in general, not uh, every single uh, form of art, but I uh, I loved making uh, drawings, like fancy drawings like ever since I can remember. That was the only uh, only art form that I could have afforded. Uh, but I was always really inspired by games and movies and uh, fantasy has always been my, my f- favorite uh, genre. And it, it always like, you know, it always like, boggled my mind it's like how people actually make this incredibly cool renders and I always wanted to try it after a while it become a bit boring you know it's just just drawing everything on a paper like all 2d and I just really I just really wanted to try 3d and this is how it happened when I started learning it it was actually ZBrush that uh, really made me want to learn about 3d and that was the first tool that i started learning about and started practicing with obviously it was a pretty hard decision because i had a job back then but then i uh, made this decision okay i'm gonna uh, start a new life and try to make my dreams come true and i quit my job and uh, i sold my home and uh I moved back to my parents <laughs> and I spent two years with learning and, and practicing all day long, every single day. And when I say every single day, I really mean it. It, it didn't matter if it was Christmas or New Year's Eve or my birthday. I didn't care. I was sitting at a computer and I was just practicing. You didn't want to do anything else. I, I understand that. I was chasing my dreams and I put everything on this like my whole life I sacrificed everything for this but you know uh, everyone has uh, everyone has a dream and uh, like that that's what uh, gives meaning to our life I guess <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in Amsterdam oh, at wow. the moment I got a job like two weeks ago so they flew and you that's out. why I'm here yeah that's amazing man mm-hmm. life changed really fast for you <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, I mean, life was pretty static for like the last couple of years, like the last two years, <laughs> and now, like, you know, you just took a big change. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, bam! Yeah. Yeah, everything was like blowing up around me, blowing up around me, like. <laughs> just, it's just kind of incredible. Of this, this, of this project, right? Like that project was mm-hmm. sort of a gateway um, to a whole yeah. opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we can we can say that we can put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> My story with Think Tank was a little bit different because uh, I um, like I traveled there. I, I did the whole thing online, but for the mentorship, you know, I had the chance to travel there, and uh, I had to, like <clears throat> let let let's put it away. Like I had financial difficulties. <laughs> At the time, you know, when when I when I uh, traveled there, I was like, okay, this mentorship is gonna take uh, four months for me, and uh, I had uh, funds that would cover four months 
of staying in Vancouver. But after that, you know, I would uh, I would arrive at total zero on my account, and I would have to uh, come back home anyways. And I was like, uh, it was like a month in uh, in the mentorship when you know I just I just really started um, to get concerned about the whole thing because I saw that I'm not gonna finish my project in four months and I was really struggling and I uh, I you know I, I had to make I had to make a decision and this is why uh, this is why I chose to actually withdraw so I spent only one month there with my mentor Jude I know him and and then I uh, uh, I traveled back home to Hungary and I finished this project there. It was really painful to leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet, man. I mean, it's very mm. possible you could potentially come back. Um, yeah, hopefully. Through, That'd be great. <laughs> although, of course, COVID is really making things extremely difficult um, for travel and that kind of well, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for the whole world. I left uh, Vancouver and I came back home and I uh, finished the scene. It took me six months. Right. It took me six months to finish this project. Yeah. And after that happened, uh, only after that I started uh, uh, making applications, yeah. uh, sending out applications. So, so that project was your ticket to to yeah. going to Amsterdam. Yeah. Well, actually, I. Uh, made a couple of attempts before, you know, I, I sent out a few applications before I had this scene because I had uh, other um, projects that uh, I uploaded in my uh, portfolio, uh, like very early, earlier works. But uh, <laughs> any time when I apply to somewhere, I only, I always received only the automatic, those automatic automated uh, yeah. negative responses. Like, you know, it, it begins with, Hello, Balash. Thank you for applying, but yep. we yep. decided to continue this process with another candidate. Yep. So you know, uh, after receiving like, uh, I uh, I didn't even know like uh, twenty or thirty of those. <laughs> I uh, I just had to accept that. Okay, I'm I'm not that good yet. <laughs> That is a really, and I, that, that's a really, uh, that's a difficult thing to deal with. Um, it, it is, it is, but you know, it's, it's the reality. Like I knew, um, but when I started learning this, I knew that it was going to be like a long journey. It's going to take a lot of time and uh, insane dedication because j just simply like uh, it's, it's because of the nature of this industry. Like everyone in the world can apply, and uh, there are free resources online. Everyone can learn this. Everyone who really, really want, wants to do so. And uh, I, I knew that uh, the bar, the quality bar, is already set really, really high. And you know, just just hitting that bar is is gonna be tough. <laughs> And, but you were you were self teaching yourself. You were doing the tutorial videos. Uh, oh yeah, a lot <laughs> for, for a long time. You started at Foundations, is that correct? Yes. Yes. So how long true. had you been mm -hmm. learning before you came to Foundations at Think Tank Online? It was somewhere around uh, April or May back in uh, in 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 2018 when I started learning 3D. Uh, before that. I uh, I had absolutely like zero knowledge. <laughs> I I only played around with Photoshop uh, a couple of times in my free time, but uh, but that's all. That that that's all I had. So I started learning uh, at home, and uh, at that point I don't know like how um, let's say evolved the online learning uh, platform was. You know, I, I, grew, I grew up in, in, uh, in the traditional education, like when you go to like a brick and, mortar, brick and mortar school and you learn everything there. And uh, I haven't even considered like uh, learning online as an option, even though it sounds like really convenient. 
learning online is is it feasible do you think to, to learn oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely i think it's the best way and if i was to repeat this whole thing like again from scratch i would definitely learn uh online uh and i would yeah i like at home it, it has a couple of uh, you know disadvantages but still like the efficiency that uh, one can achieve when you can dedicate all your time to learning the craft that you really want to it was just like priceless <laughs> yeah did you find that you were able to you know when you were working on a on a project and you get mm -hmm. stuck you hit a wall were you able to get a solution to your problem quickly enough well sometimes yes sometimes not really <laughs> It um, it's very heavily depended on how like how serious the issue was that I bumped into, and uh, with, when I was doing this with Think Tank, I had um, the opportunity like like all the time to contact teachers and instructors, and uh, also they have that uh, online platform, this online community where I could. Uh, just instantly message um, like every single student who were also studying there. So we could figure out what the issue can be. Um, many times when I really needed to solve something quickly, I, I, I always you know, just started Googling for solutions. And uh, it's like the, there are so many, so many times if you just, if you just really know how to search for something for a solution, you know how to Google it then you, you you can find a solution maybe not exactly what you are looking for but something very similar and you can you can just see uh, like a very similar workflow like how someone else saw something that's very uh, almost identical and that way you just you just learn something new and you can solve it uh, you solve your problem for yourself and uh, also, I like like uh, a year ago. I joined. Uh, I, I I created a Discord Discord account. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm on Discord. Too. And that th that was that was a huge thing. Like that has totally changed my life. <laughs> Discord. Hey, Absolutely. So which, which servers do you do you hang out on on Discord <laughs> for you know 3D stuff? Yeah, like the main one is the Dynasty Discord. That that's the one. Uh, where I, where I uh, spend the most time in, but also later on, uh, an another one uh, was formed called the Experience Points. These are two. These are the two main servers where I am. They have a ton of uh, how you call it, uh, channels. They have a ton of channels here, and there's uh, specifically specifically one for critiques, right? And another one for troubleshooting, right? So. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was pretty frequent in those two channels <laughs> when I was working on my stuff. P people in the server are very active, so responses came uh, sometimes uh, in just a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, definitely, like it's it's also um, it also depends on how complex the problem is. When when something like this happens, uh, when uh, you need to troubleshoot something. There's always like a thousand different uh, like options what might have caused the issue, mm -hmm. and for one issue there is multiple solutions. I cannot really recall an actual example when uh, we couldn't solve an issue, but many times uh, I uh, I try to solve it myself. Cool. Yeah, and you and you have to have that. Uh, resilience and that that um, self uh, yeah. self reliance on pr problem solving, you have to develop that yeah. as a technical artist. That's critical. <laughs> totally critical. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you can't really progress if if you constantly need someone to help you solve a problem. But yeah, when you're learning, learning, when you're in the, these early stages, it's absolutely crucial to have that because you 
you're getting to a point where you understand most of what you need to understand to complete the project. But if there's this one mm -hmm. barrier, then you lose, you've completely lost all your energy, all your forward momentum. You're pushing, you're like pushing away at this project and, and you're like in the zone and you know, you're working mm -hmm. more efficiently and you're, you're definitely in a much more focused state. And then you hit that hurdle and you get tripped by it. And then it's like, mm -hmm all of your momentum is gone um and it's <laughs> extremely frustrating. yeah it's it's so frustrating. yeah it it happened it happened to me several times yeah. there were things when uh I, I i couldn't bake the lights like for example uh, a couple of meshes had very very weird seams and uh, later on i figured out i i can't really remember if it was uh with the help of the community or figured it by myself but uh, the issue was that uh I didn't have proper light maps, for example. And when I uh, found out about that, you know, I I completely changed my, not completely, but it it uh, changed my workflow for the future. So so that that was pretty big that I can recall. Or uh, I had baking issues several times when I tried to bake stuff separately, but. Uh, the normals on the meshes weren't uh, clean, weren't set in the right uh, way. Like apart from the technical issues, like this is uh, also art. So <laughs> I had creative issues too, like many, many times. And I was, I was posting um, my whip shots on Discord. And like, you know, just asking for feedback because I was really curious, like how uh, that put together my stuff uh, was in terms of composition, like the colors, the shapes, like uh, does uh, does it uh, reflects what I'm trying to achieve? And it's also really important to be able to like mm, phrase uh, what. Uh, Am I really looking for? You know, whenever I was uh, um, I was looking for feedback, I I I never I never did it in a way that I just posted a screenshot and I was okay, guys. Any feedback? Any advice? Like how to make it better? Like uh, in my opinion, that's that's not a good way to do it. It's really important to actually say uh, what uh, what I'm trying to achieve with that shot like okay here this is my plan this is what i want to have like uh i want to have uh like balance on my picture and uh, i mainly want to focus uh, on this area and highlight this and want to tell this kind of story like you know just saying just saying what my what my goal is and with that in mind the community can give you much better feedback because they can tell you, okay, if you want to achieve this, then I I would do this or I would do this. Because if if you don't say what you want, they can oh maybe this one looks better or the, if you or move this object like there. But uh, if you move the object there, you know it completely changes the composition and it's gonna be something else that uh, you are trying to achieve. They if can you, give you feedback that it's that's like actually, uh, actionable. Yeah, it's actually actionable. <laughs> that you can that you can uh, that you can do something with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, sure. you, that you can use. Yeah, that is that is very astute, Balash. That is it's very true because otherwise it just looks like you're wanting a compliment or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, I really, I really hope that I could uh, get my idea across. <laughs> it was a little bit difficult, you know, uh, to explain. Uh, well, no, I mean, you you, you uh, must uh, have because your your final result was extraordinarily good. Uh, I, one of the things oh, about your, your piece that really strikes me is how many props there are. There are <laughs> you must have modeled yeah. a thousand props for that. That's a common uh, comment, actually. <laughs> it's a common comment. Yeah. Well. It's yeah. Obvious, so yeah. many people have already told me like how like it's kind of like 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 um, unbelievable <laughs> how many unique objects are there. <laughs> well, how many unique objects are there? Do you know? Oh, yo. So, what's the question? Yeah, that okay. is, I guess sure. How many? Do you, uh, know, do you know how many there are? I, I, I don't know it by heart, but uh, I have a, 
Mm, I have um, on, on our station in my portfolio, uh, right next to my scene, I have uh, another uploaded uh, thing called uh, the breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a screenshot there where you can see all, all the items, like all the individual assets. Sure, okay. I, I don't know, I, <laughs> I, I haven't counted them, but I think it's like, I think it's more than like 50 or 60. Yeah, I, I was going to say 60. <laughs> less than 100, but not Something so like far that. Away. Oh, less, less than 100, yeah. Yeah, but I, no. So I, it's interesting. I'm, I'm just kind of imagining you approaching this project. And the thing about your project also is that you didn't have a reference, right? You were not working from a reference. You imagined an antique store. Uh, what you're saying is uh, partially true because I had, a, I had a concept art for this that I used uh, as a base for the whole thing. But uh, the concept art itself was very noisy and uh, it, it, it was only good for like uh, seeing how, how that room was actually like uh, designed where, uh, where were the big pieces of furniture where was the window, uh, where there were doorways, where were the counter, like the, seeing these big shapes and how it was uh, uh, organized and composed. So it was good for that. But everything else, er everything else I needed to, you know, just imagine as what you said and um, gather a lot of reference images. I was spending countless hours browsing Pinterest, which I previously thought like it was a website for uh, enthusiastic women gathering uh, recipes for cookies, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it turned out to be pretty useful uh, for what I needed it for. And uh, I also watched uh, like authentic uh, um, Asian movies like uh, Ip Man and uh, I love Ip Man. Crouch Crouching Tiger, oh, Hidden Dragon. Yeah. There were others which didn't even have like uh, English uh, translated titles, you know, just, just see like those uh, authentic uh, Oriental interiors, yeah. which, uh, which, you know, which were not, not, not contemporary. Like uh, it was really hard to find photos of places like that. Hmm. And, uh, as for the objects themselves, you know, that was um, that was uh, um, something that I really struggled with. Not to, uh, so not particularly with making them. That that was uh, that was kind of the easy peasy part. But uh, uh, but but the, the composition itself, it was it was extremely extremely difficult to compose everything i had finally i had like 15 shots 15 camera angles and placing everything there in order to uh, have everything uh, in harmony because you know when i changed something i moved an object a tiny bit because oh okay it looked better from this angle it changed another one yeah. and uh, on effect <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, because the, sort of some objects are big, some objects are small. You have mm -hmm. this issue of scale and depth. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and if you, yeah, certain objects will become the focal point for a person's eye. And so you have to be very careful yeah. about your arrangement of these different objects mm -hmm. and where they are and how close they are to the camera and what's in focus. Otherwise, it looks yeah. confusing. Right, and also you know just just thinking about the story because uh, um, for several weeks I just so it, it happened that like I haven't added to the scene and it had haven't sorry haven't added anything to the scene for weeks because uh, I I just didn't know how to like uh, move forward with it because. Um, I, I wanted to plan the composition, but I didn't have assets to do so. You know, I tried to like gray boxing, 
things, but uh, that di that didn't work out uh, pretty well, just just simply because how uh, intricate those items were gonna be by the end when I uh, model and texture all of them. It 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 was just impossible for me, you know, just to try to imagine like placing like a gray mesh there and just try to imagine that okay, this object is gonna be there. Um, so, okay, I thought, okay, then let's make some assets. But uh, I I didn't know what assets I'm gonna I was gonna need because I haven't planned out the composition yet. So you know, you know what I'm uh, what I'm saying. It's, it's like it's it like created like a situation. yeah yeah. It was it yeah. it quickly became like a vicious circle mm -hmm. which I just couldn't find my way out of. And uh, I struggled a lot for like, I don't know how many weeks even, I think it was even more than a month or even two months. I don't know, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty long. <laughs> but finally, what I actually did, like, I was like, okay, I, I started figuring out the story a little bit more like, okay, uh, this uh, woman traveled to China and uh, started uh, like exploring the area. Uh, gathering a ton of uh, artifacts and relics uh, from all, uh, all around the Asian uh, continent. And uh, that way I know that, okay, my objects are gonna be like oh. Asian, Asian artifacts. And I started Googling images and I found uh, thousands of those which looked like really, really nice and I you know I, ju I just I just felt you know the desire to make them to craft them and uh, I, but I also also uh, I wanted to be really uh, careful with this because there were a few objects objects which were just you know too flashy and just too um, vibrant and I wanted to make it also authentic and believable you know it's just it's uh it's try to avoid you know you want to make something that looks cool but you want to try to avoid it to be too cool because it just doesn't make sense <laughs> i and, uh, it's a very mature thing to uh <laughs> to say and to realize and yeah there's a there's a consistency i think that's the um the important aspect uh, it, everything looks like it belongs there. As you say, nothing in particular is demanding your attention. There's not one particular item that is obviously the one hero asset. Maybe that dragon, you know, or the sword. Uh, yeah, the close shots. The, but, the close uh, up of the dragon or the sword, but that's because it's close up. Um, yeah, but uh, when you see the first shot, the where, where, you, where you see the whole interior the establishing shot is specifically designed in a way that nothing's nothing really stands out and uh, i know that a couple like like not a couple like many many people like uh, artists actually like pointed out like okay what's the focal point of this image and uh, you know the the answer to this question is like uh, nothing really yeah not in the, but, not in the uh, establishing shots there can't be it's just the yeah whole theme, and uh, the entire scene yeah ex yeah exactly because the whole scene tells a story um sorry not whole this scene is like has many many stories like every single object has its own story and when you look at the establishing shots you see everything and there is de there are definitely like uh, scenes which were specifically made for like one camera angle where you have a focal point that that's fine but that's uh that that's not always the the goal of an artist. If you look at like um, a few like classical classic traditional paintings, you don't always see a focal point there. Like the main the main thing on an on an image on a composition is just to lead the eyes of the viewer so that they can explore the whole image in a way that you want them to explore it. Uh, and, and that doesn't really need like an exact, like, like a focal point, like, okay, you need to look at this because this is what's 
highlighted. Well, unless that's exactly what your intention. Like, but oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. And that's sure. the whole point. Of, sure. of, well, one of the points of being an artist is that you are mm -hmm. controlling the attention of your viewer. Yeah. Uh, and my goal here was, you know, having this, have uh, like a shot which shows you everything, the whole scene. You can get the vibe, the atmosphere. You can see, okay, where we are. You see everything. And then having the close, close camera lander, close uh, shots, which telling different stories yeah. and yeah. showing different things yeah you so there's a ton of stories there's a there are a lot of stories in there in that shop that happened and the the main shot shows everything and then you have the close shots that shows uh the like let's say the individual stories <laughs> yeah yeah no it's there's there's a, a whole world there are so many different stories encapsulated <laughs> in that in that environment yeah exactly yeah 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 <laughs> very that's why it's so captivating and and and, uh, and fascinating 